Our first recipient was the last one to receive an Auburn degree. He was also the last U.S. commanding general to leave Iraq. Years earlier, in 2003, General Lloyd Austin led the 3rd in Infantry in the liberation of Iraq. You might say he was the first one in and the last one out. To put it very simply, he's my greatest hero. Quality, character, the leader determines the performance, the results. And here you have the quality, the character of Lloyd Austin. There is no greater example I know that even comes near. Upon graduating from West Point U.S. Military Academy in 1975, Second Lieutenant Lloyd Austin took his first assignment in Germany as a rifle and scout platoon leader in the 3rd Infantry Division. His next assignment would be as commander of the Combat Support Squadron of the 82nd Airborne Division at Fort Bragg. He took my old job on the brigade staff and he got an impact award, which told me that, uh, hey, this guy is very good. He was in a very challenging position. And, and he's always been able to do that. In 1984, Austin made his way to Auburn University. While on the plains, Austin would earn a master's degree in counselor education, while his wife Charlene, the woman who has been at his side throughout his prolific military career, also earned a master's degree from Auburn. I first met then Captain Austin when he returned to West Point after graduating from Auburn. Austin served as a company tactical officer for his first alma mater. Watching General Austin uh, as a company academic counselor, you knew that this was a special leader who was going to do some amazing things throughout his career as an Army officer. In 1999, after having completed numerous Army colleges and several training schools and serving in various positions and assuming several commands to include the 10th Mountain Division, the 505th Parachute Infantry Regiment, and the 3rd Brigade, General Austin was assigned to the Pentagon. He has blended very well the command experiences, the staff experiences, for example, being the operations officer for the 82nd Airborne Division, being a recruiter in Indianapolis, uh, being on the joint staff twice, uh, serving in positions of great responsibility. He always treats people on his team and around him with dignity and respect, and he's able to draw uh, the best out of anyone that works around him. In 2003, as assistant division commander for the 3rd Infantry Division, he helped maneuver the division's invasion and eventual liberation of Iraq. For gallantry in action, General Austin was awarded the Silver Star. He's been able to lead multiple formations into multiple combat operations with very few casualties. After being promoted to Major General, his next assignment from 2003 to 2005 would be Commander of Operation Enduring Freedom in Afghanistan. But I think what he has done in such a masterful way is prepare himself for challenges that uh, are offered him. I know he had a lot of uh, challenges as we all did. And he, he was always able to overcome them because of his integrity. He's smart, he's focused, uh, and uh, he, he has this innate ability to win people over. For all that General Austin has done for the U.S. Army and his country over the years, he has also made major strides along the way for African Americans. He was the first African American to ever command a division and army corps in combat. Upon pinning on his fourth star, Austin became the Army's 200th four-star general and only the sixth African-American army general. I attended his swearing in for the vice chief of staff and they had to move it out of the Pentagon to a facility that was large enough to, to receive all the people that, would, that wanted to come and watch this historic event. General Austin is the first African-American vice chief of staff um, in the, uh, of the Army historically, and, and that's a big deal. He's the second highest ranking military officer in our country, and I can go to bed and feel very secure about my country and my democracy and the future.
because of Lee Austin and where he is. Here's a man who has, who has taken advantage of all that America could offer and, and has fought for the country and, and is still fighting for the country. And so uh, what, what an American hero, what a story. Throughout his life and career, Lloyd Austin has consistently accomplished tasks before him with impressive skill. There's no question our nation's army is in great hands. The Auburn Alumni Association is proud to name him a Lifetime Achievement Award winner. I think it will be close to his heart. You're giving him the honor because of the quality and character of the leader and what he means to this country, to this democracy, and how his love of Auburn University has stayed with him. His congratulations, Lloyd and Charlene. This is a great, big honor. It's a big deal. I'm smiling. I'm happy for you. I'm proud to see all the recognition that you've earned because I know if it was up to you, you would just sit down in the audience and be quiet. And so now's the time to say congratulations, job well done, and I'll talk to you later. someone um, what they were going to show tonight and I think Tanya said it's supposed to be a surprise and I said you know I've been staying alive for you know many years because I try not to be surprised but <laughs> tonight I'm surprised and I'm grateful in part the Auburn Creed states that I believe in education which gives me the knowledge to work wisely and trains my mind and my hands to work skillfully. You know, I attribute much of the success that I've had in my military career to the education that I received here at Auburn a quarter century ago. It is incredibly humbling to return to this, this uh, to return to Auburn this evening for such a special and indeed unexpected honor. Dr. Googe, Dr. Shaw, Mr. Poundstone, faculty, staff, students, alumni, and other distinguished guests, to my family, some of whom have traveled long distances to be here, and I am most, most grateful to them for having done so. And finally, a very special welcome to my fellow honorees. Indeed, I am in excellent company tonight, to say the least. Our nation's military represents one of the fundamental pillars of our society. Providing for our security and standing guard of our liberties as it has done without fail for over 236 years. Another pillar is comprised of entrepreneurs and the captains of business and industry who fuel the economic energy, uh, economic engine that generates the wealth and creates the innovations that enable the prosperity in our way of life. The third pillar includes volunteers and all of those who serve in some way, including our educators, the clergy, doctors, members of our law enforcement and emergency responders. They advance our culture and enrich our lives and assist those in need and provide critical support to countless worthy causes. It is no surprise and no accident that each of these elements is represented in this room this evening. These distinct elements of society combine to make a great nation, a nation unlike any other in the world. No profession is necessarily more important than, than, than another. And simply stated, all of us contribute in different yet meaningful ways to the fabric, to the prosperity, and to the security of this nation. 
One of the things that makes institutions of learning like this esteemed university so valuable to our society is the unique forum that they provide us. They bring together people from different walks of life, representing various professions, all contributing unique perspective, perspectives and experiences to the benefit of larger groups. Over the years, the broadening experiences that I, I had here helped me make my way through the military and get done some of the things that, uh, that we were able to achieve. And we certainly had some very difficult objectives and goals to, to, uh, to achieve in this, in this last 10 years or so. But you know, for nearly four decades, I have been privileged to lead and serve beside the outstanding men and women who make up our armed forces. And whether in combat or whether while providing humanitarian assistance or disaster relief or aiding in peacekeeping efforts around the world, America's soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen epitomize what it means to serve others. They have awed and inspired me on a routine basis. It should be noted that over the past decade, the focus of our military has not been solely on combat, but also on building, building partnerships, infrastructure, economic opportunity, and political and military capacity. In addition to combat operations, members of the US-led team representing the military, the interagency, and non-governmental organizations work closely with foreign leaders, enabling them to establish governments and to conduct peaceful and democratic elections and to recruit and train standing armies and security forces, all in an effort to bring peace and stability to the Middle East region. I do believe that America's military, together with our coalition partners, our allies, and our friends over the years have made a positive difference in the lives of people around the world. They have provided hope to, a pe to people who have not seen hope in their lifetime. And this, I believe, is what it means to serve others, to provide hope and opportunity, not just in war zones or on battlefields, but in lecture halls and operating rooms and laboratories and offices and elsewhere. This is our shared responsibility as people, as citizens, and as Americans. And I am deeply honored to receive this award. But the truth is, the facts are that many, many people played a role in helping me to get to this point. Certainly my parents, as well as my teachers and mentors, my high school football coach, Coach Jim Hughes, Dr. Jim Hughes, who is also an Auburn graduate, is here tonight. Thank you, sir. Good to see you. Other colleagues and classmates, and my good friend and battle buddy, Command Sergeant Major Joe Allen, who is one of the finest non-commissioned officers that I've ever worked with, is here. And thank you, Joe. And I'm deeply, deeply grateful to all of them uh, for what they've done to help me get to this moment. And last but not least, I want to thank my bride, Charlene, for her love and support over the years. Her selflessness, the care and compassion and the love that she shows me and our family, and the soldiers and families of our Army is the very best gift that I could ever receive. My name is on this award, but it is our award together. And Charlene, thanks for what you've done. And again, <laughs> I thank you for this very special recognition. May God bless you. May God continue to bless this country, the greatest country in the world, War Eagle. Thank you.